All right, guys, we're gonna continue and finish up my aileron and flap enlargements on Scrappy. I'm really excited how it's gone, so stick around. Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, I've now got my new aileron stretched and I officially get to cut out a section of the wing, which I don't know why I enjoy it. The first time I cut a wing in half on one of my race planes to do a new wing. I don't know, I actually took a big old skill saw with a carbide blade for wood and just cut it off. But um, this is much easier. I'm gonna cut this out. You can see where this is gonna have the over center to help assist with the power steering. I'm also designed in a counterweight into it that's uh, adjustable and changeable by changing a plate so that I can counterweight and balance the aileron. So I've got this all marked out. I did it all off the of calipers. Since everything on Scrappy is in a computer, I was able to just go right off of sheet metal lines that are exact and laser cut and get to the third decimal. So I can't cut that accurate, but I'll cut a little bit big and I can sand that accurate because I like to sand, I guess. <laughs> on the top corner so I don't have a place where the aluminum wants to tear. It wouldn't in this location anyway, it's on the top of the main rib. Um, if you're curious what the blue and the yellow tape just helps you see it. And then I mark what side I want the thickness of this blade on. And then I go 20 thousandths of an inch big um, on aluminum and I know I can keep a pretty straight line. And then I'm gonna sand back if I pull this off. I had used this to literally mark and scrape a line exactly to the third decimal and I can now take a big, long, flat block and sand that aluminum edge back till I hit a score line that's scratching the paint. So we should be able to get it exactly right so that when I do this extension, uh, all the tolerance is right. I'm gonna have a quarter inch reveal around it to make sure I don't get any icing problems. So, so far, so good. Let's cut the bottom out, go to the other side. Got to work. <laughs> awesome. Last mark, left wing, right wing's done. This is showing 2.193 off of the seam line. Set 2.193. Let's come up and take a look. That is gonna be exact to the third decimal. I'll cut it just barely this side and sand to that. So far it's going perfect. Back to work. All right, guys, we got Scrappy lowered down to get the motorcycles on, but I have something even more exciting than loading motorcycles on Scrappy again, and that is I've got a new program I've been dreaming about for a while, and I'm gonna give it a shot, and I hope it works. The first time I flew a plane and got it two inches off the ground, my first flight experience with a flight instructor, I was hooked, game over, airplanes for life and here I am making airplanes and doing flying videos and I want to share that love of flight with all of you. So I have this crazy idea and I hope all of you can help me out. I would like to take all these wonderful contributions of people buying my silly shirts and gear and take that money and spin it in a big circle and huck it back out there and pay for people's first flights. So I created a add on my website, mikepady.com, where flight schools can get on and say they're a flight school. I can connect with you and send you some money and have you help find some people and take them on their first magical flight. Also, if you're an individual flight instructor, there's a place you can fill out and I can see, put you in a drawing and just be able to send random people all over the world and pay for their first flight experience as well 
as a place for any of you who just follow the videos and maybe somehow through this knucklehead decided you might actually dare and try something crazy like flying in a small airplane, I would love to pay for that. Get on the site, just fill out your name and information that you would like to try flying for the first time. And I'm just gonna randomly select people from all of those flight instructors, flight schools, and those of you who want to have their first flight paid for by me and start picking them as I sell more gear, shirts, hats. I've already got an amount I'm gonna send out right now because so many of you bought my Support Our Troop shirts. It was surprising. I'm gonna be able to get a bunch of you your first flight paid for, not by me really, but by all of you, followers, friends of aviation that decided you wanted a coffee mug or a shirt or a set of scrappy spars or something else, I wanna give it back. So let's get some people airborne. Let's see how this works. If you know anyone who might fit any of those bills, I am super excited about it. I have brand new shirts that came in from several of you, drew up some fun flying aviation shirts and I put them on the website. There is even more designs coming and I've sent checks out to those of you who came up with an idea that's ended up on my website. And I wanna keep doing that to say thank Thanks, because all of you are contributing to this channel and that contributes to growing our wonderful, awesome family of aviators. And if you're not a flight instructor, a flight school, or someone who wants the first flight, I really would like to ask for your help. I don't do it very often. Please help me out by just maybe sharing this video with anybody or just letting people know I would like to find a way to pay for these flights and just put it out to the world so I can connect all of you who would love the first opportunity to fly and all those out there who have never seen any of these videos so they can see this video and enter in and I have a chance to send them up for their first flight experience. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Please fight schools. Reach out. Get your name on my website. Let me find a way to send you some money and send people flying. Love you guys. Back to work. Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> Modifying a Harbor Freight sheet metal brake to get tighter tolerances. <laughs> oh, well then back to work. Back to work. <laughs> and this worked a lot better. You can see the tolerance difference between these two bends. So uh, uh, several of you have commented that I'm always using some cheap tools, a bunch of stuff out of Harbor Freight. And actually I can't help it. I grew up with the cheapest tools you can possibly get. And then I found I'd rather have five of some cheaper tools than one really expensive one I can't find. This says it does everything the iPad does at half the price. Mom, do not screw me over again! I have some big breaks, obviously, in equipment and machines at Best Tugs, but what I'm doing today, little extensions for the ailerons. I need to bend a bunch of teeny parts. I just soon do it here in the shop on a little cheap break, and we modified it. Now, it's a good break. <laughs> back to work. All right, guys, right now, we just got all the parts back from the laser cut. All these pieces you see laid out are the extensions for my ailerons. You can kind of tell what that is. All these tabs will bend down, make the radius, the lightning holes. It's got the attached points for my hinge brackets. Uh, every one of these sheets has a template pattern that gives me all my bends, the dimensions. I've gone everything down to the third decimal. So I'll set my calipers up, then put it on here and bend it. So it's gonna go really fast, it should be easy. Literally everything right down to these heavier plates. If you were to take this plate, bend it up like this drawing shows, it would end up being in the very furthest forward part of the aileron extension with a counterweight add-on ability. So you need to balance your ailerons so they don't start to move at higher speeds. Uh, most cubs don't have a counterweight at 80, 90 miles an hour on a lightweight aileron. They don't tend to start to move on you. But the faster and faster you go, the bigger the aileron, you need to start counterweighting it. So even my race plane has a tiny aileron. There you go. Right. <laughs> it has to be perfect or it'll start to shake on you. This was, I was able to draw in SolidWorks, set how far its moment forward was, and then actually figure out what size of plate and weight I need to counterbalance that. So what I did is I calculated that out and when this goes in and I bend it up, it's in the furthest forward most, and I can bolt it on. Now, the reason I did it so I could bolt it and unbolt it is in case after paint, it's not quite perfect, and I wanna add weight or take away weight, I can change this plate, increase its size, increase its thickness if I wanted, or hopefully drill some holes in it is the way I've got it set up so that I can put it in a little heavy, punch holes in it until the weight is perfect after paint, and then bolt it back in. So I had to design into the sheet. This will be the sheet that bends 
around to make that part. You can see that hole big enough to put your hand through. This inspection door plate, and then this is so that I don't have a step the thickness of 25 thousandths thick. Um, I want it to be perfectly smooth. So I made this. We'll go up in and come in from the back side and plug that hole. But when it goes on, it's perfectly flush. So everything's in it. The nut plates, pre-drawn, pre-drafted. If it weren't for SolidWorks, this would become a much bigger job. Sometimes drawing it in the computer takes as long as assembling it when it's done. But the combination of the two is still twice as fast as just hand fitting it. So if I didn't have SolidWorks, I certainly couldn't get this precise, but anyway, I'm rambling. I'm procrastinating, bending a lot of parts. So you guys know the drill. About to work. Okay, quick little tip. Always pre-sand the aluminum. I do put the green etch on the inside. The outside needs paint. If I fold this up when it's this smooth, and then rivet it together, you're never gonna get the paint to stick really well right around the rivets. So you see a lot of aircraft, you'll see right around the rivets, the paint popping off. So just quickly pre-sand it. Now I'm gonna go ahead, tape this off so I can make a little score line down the tape based on my drawings, just using some calipers to make the line, and then we'll bend on the tape. Now I can simply take this based on the drawing, 1.294, I've preset this, locked it, and I just put a nice light line. I don't want it to go through into the metal. Just enough I can see it. Leaves it just a trace of a mark down it. Now I can bend it. Slightly straighten that up. There we go. Two down, bunch to go. Gonna do a trial fit. Even though these look the same, there's A and B parts, and one goes inside the other. So the bend is actually only changes between these two parts, other than their mirrors, the thickness of the material. So, but I've labeled which is inside, outside. And if I slide them together, see that doesn't line up, but when it gets perfectly tight, it should go all the way till they're flush. There you go. And it puts all the edges right in line. Pretty cool, huh? It's my little box. Back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, this will be our first trial fit. This gives you an idea, just one of these simple parts, but every single one of them were laid out on our papers telling us this is 98 degrees, 70 degrees. That's why the angles are different. And we haven't trial fit it, but if everything goes as planned, it should be correct width and bend. So let's start with, I'm gonna kind of go past it. It's supposed to tuck right into the door frame, inspection door trim, touch it, and then rotate down. There it goes. <laughs> if the rest goes as good, we'll be back in the air in two days. Back to work. All right, guys, so we already tried, just tried this piece. So I tried this one along this edge to close that out. I need to stop the air from transferring into there. So that's this crazy looking part right here. If all goes well, this should tuck right here. I should be able to put it in and then slide it forward till it hits the matching arc. <laughs> side down we'll go to the other we've got the thick plate for the new hinge point to carry the farthest tip of this it's installed i've got a bushing pressed in it's all ready to go and i think it looks like it was original other than paint so i'm gonna tape this all off get it painted up let's get back to work all right guys now it's the fun part <laughs> if it goes good it's the fun part um all of these have been bent they all have custom angles so that's all done um they've been sanded and prepped for coating uh deburred now all we need to do is click it together do a trial fitment then dimple all the parts i want everything flush set so all these are going to be dimple dyed and assemble so if it goes well we'll be done here in 20 30 minutes i hope maybe an hour <laughs> Better be less than an hour. Back to work. All right, guys. <laughs> it's crazy how lightweight you can make a little structural part. Anyway, here you go. 
You can see everything is flush set rivets. And to do this, just took a little bit more time because I've got this eighth inch plate where I've got the hinges on here. And so I actually had to set up a countersink to drill the eighth inch plate to exactly match what my dimple die set would dimple the thickness of the sheet metal. So we dimpled the sheet metal, use this countersink that you can adjust the depth of how far it goes in. And I did several tests on scrap material like this until I got it perfect where the two meet up perfectly. And uh, that made a nice flush set, so it's really clean. But anyway, super excited about it. You can now see where these plates go in. There's inspection doors that belong in this location right here. And that gives you just enough room to slide this up in and surprisingly through these holes like the trial fitted in the computer and does work and then bolt that counterweight up into the front to those plates anyway that's it attach it to the current ailerons then we can skin it you know the deal let's get back to work All right, guys, that couldn't have gone any better. There's my part. There's the inspection door. This actually passes up in, drops down from the top down so that it makes it perfectly flush. You can see this side has lightning holes in it where this doesn't have any uh, way for water to get to it. This overlap is what overlaps the skin of the other part of the aileron so that it's got a double lap. And I made the bond beam inside, the box beam, sorry, inside that this will attach to. So I'll actually open this back up. I can rivet all the bottom side, come all the way around the top. I'll put it on the plane. I can then attach the box beam to this. And then this skin overlap with four sets of lines of rivets that tie it into the main beam of the original aileron. So unbelievably light, even though it has 90% of the weight is the Clico. Let's get back to work. We got another one to do. All right, that could not have gone any better. Got my clearance. Everything is just worked out perfect. So I got a couple more rivets to put in here. You see the ailerons on Scrappy droop with the flaps. So I've got the flaps down. Now I'm gonna quickly go ahead and make a part I drew up in the computer that closes up this gap for where the main rib passed through. So I'm gonna tighten up this gap here. And then this one here, I finished up my carbon fiber pieces, so I can't get them on unless I remove the flaps. So I'll remove the flaps, put on my gap fills here. And this is critical. I have almost just over three inches of gap right here. And I'm letting so much high pressure blast through here. Um, I'm probably losing is the equivalent of almost this much flap. All that air is just billowing out right here and kind of negating some of that high pressure air and letting it escape to the low pressure air. So this will make a big difference. A few inches here. Of course, it's a few more inches flat, but it's the equivalent of a lot more. Another inch of aileron here to close up this gap. We've given more than 50% more aileron control overall because the leverage position of the three and a half inches on the back and the lengthening of the two ends, but primarily that end over there. So should work good. We've got a lot to do. Let's get back to work. Here's the part to close out the air gap. There's just about a one inch gap. I'm gonna drop it to just under a quarter inch. This should go flush to the bottom and then push it tight until it touches and come around and see this other side. You can see the gap is closed out. And you can see as the aileron moves, the air stays trapped between the two. So I don't get air escaping right there. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I'm really happy how fast this came together. We literally started assembling today. No, it hasn't crossed midnight yet. So it's still today. We started doing these. These were on the plane. We started adding these add-ons, the fences on the end, and the gap seals at the back, all today. And we were planning on not painting until later, but it went so fast, we ripped them off the plane, blew up the tent. Let's get them sprayed tonight. It'll probably be after midnight before they're done, but. We can install them tomorrow. You guys know the drill. That's work. All right, new aileron are done. Extended nine and one. Plus my gap seals closed up at the other side, which gave me another three and a half. Plus three and a half down the entire back edge of the aileron, as well as the flap. 
So I'm really happy with this. You can kind of see how the air will hit this other side of this and help give me power steering from the edge. I added another hinge bracket out here on the end. So now it's doubled up where the loads are when the wind gets a hold of this. You can see my inspection door right here, which goes into where I can change out my counterweight. If I ever repainted the ailerons and I need to rebalance it, I could do that. So I'll show you this going in and out. You can also see my fence right here that keeps the air as I move back and forth from jumping between the two right here and then let's go ahead and deploy the slats flaps ailerons all at once all right guys the ailerons and flaps are done and actually scrappy's already flown with them so i'm gonna have to put that on another video i am really happy with how everything has turned out we'll stick it on another video we're really behind on videos but i'm having a lot of fun so thank you guys for being patient thanks for still following along we have a lot more upgrades coming we got turbos to do this plane to get in the backcountry. so thank you for following i love you guys back to work